During the Second World War, there was a style of warfare that emerged mostly in the Pacific when things got desperate for the Japanese army. Kamikaze warfare in which pilots and other soldiers would give their lives for their emperor by crashing their aircraft or vessel into allied ships to create as much damage as possible was a sheer sign of desperation. These missions resulted in the deaths of their pilots, with the pilots believing their actions would make them martyrs, and that their end would make them honourable and almost like a samurai. The Japanese even made special weapons for this form of warfare, creating flying bombs such as the Yokosuka Oka, a rocket-powered human-guided kamikaze attack aircraft that contained a huge bomb in the nose, which would have intended to have brought chaos once it hit. However, it wasn't just the Japanese who delved into this area of kamikaze attacks, the Germans did also. Join us today as we look at the Fieseler Fi-103R of Reichenberg, the desperate attempt by the Germans to create a kamikaze weapon from a V-1 flying bomb. Remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. The V-1 flying bomb was a terrifying weapon deployed by the Germans during the Second World War that inflicted much terror and suffering across Europe. It was first used against London on the 13th of June 1944, and during the peak of its service, around 100 of these missiles were being launched towards South East England every day. As the war went on, V-1 sites began to be overrun by the Allies, and the Germans switched their attention to Antwerp and other Belgian targets, using the V-1 to rain down terror. In England, the V-1 became known as the Doodlebug or the Buzz Bomb, due to its noise it made as it passed through the sky. The V-1 was around 8 metres long, and was launched from a catapult ramp, or even sometimes from aircraft itself. On board it carried an 850kg explosive warhead that travelled at around 360 miles per hour. It was in a sense the world's first cruise missile. The V-1 was powered by a pulse jet, along with a guidance system that allowed it to reach its target. However, the vicious wonder weapon that was the V-1 was modified to become an even more sinister weapon. As mentioned earlier, the Japanese had developed a similar concept with the Yokosuka Oka, a kamikaze piloted missile aircraft which would be dropped from aircraft itself and guided towards a target by the pilot. In the nose of the Oka was a bomb, which when the Oka hit the target at a speed of around 580 miles per hour, it would wreak havoc with Allied ships. The Oka did have some success, and they did attack Allied ships in the Pacific, causing damage and casualties, and obviously resulting in the death of the kamikaze pilot inside the aircraft. The Germans decided to make their own version of this style of attack plane, using the infamous V-1. Although they aren't known for this style of warfare, times were getting desperate for the German military towards the end of the Second World War, and facing defeat, they decided to work on the Fieseler Fi-103R Reichenberg, the German flying kamikaze bomb. This version of the V-1 was adapted so that a pilot could control the rocket and guide the bomb towards a target. The Fieseler Fi-103 during attacks would have resulted in the death of the pilot, or possibly the pilot could have parachuted down to where the attack zone was. These attacks were to be carried out by the Leonidas Squadron, a unit which was formed for the purpose originally to fly the manned V-1 bomb in these attacks. So the Germans were planning to create their own squadron similar to kamikazes, and it was required by all members of the Leonidas Squadron to sign a declaration. It read, that I hereby voluntarily apply to be enrolled in the group as part of the human glider bomb. I fully understand that employment in this capacity will entail my own death. The Leonidas Squadron were planned to use a number of different aircraft, not just the Reichenberg, but they did apparently carry out some operations. According to German propaganda, 35 pilots did allegedly manage to destroy 17 bridges across the Oder River that had been built by the Soviets, and this did cause some concern to the advancing Red Army. The Leonidas squadron planned to use the V-1 piloted bomb, but instead they decided to go with the Messerschmitt Me-328 over the V-1. There were issues though with converting the Messerschmitt with a 900kg bomb on board, and Himmler himself wished to cancel the project. But upon Hitler's demand, the project was revived, with test pilot Hannah Reich becoming involved, and the modification of the manned V-1 was begun again for these deadly missions. In summer 1944, 
the DFS, the German Research Institute for Sailplane Flight, was asked to try and modify the V-1 to allow a cockpit to be placed on the V-1, which had an armoured glass windscreen in front. It was also requested that basic flight controls would be placed on the V-1, and also that flight instruments were kept to a minimum, with an altimeter, clock, gyro compass and more, fitted including a switch needed to arm the bomb. The V-1's autopilot was removed, and there was space for a small cockpit to be fitted onto the missile, although it was incredibly cramped. In fact, the seat was only a bucket seat made from plywood. The FI-103R, as it was known, had a cruise speed of around 400 miles per hour, the same as a V-1, and a diving speed out of the sky of 500 miles per hour. Improvements to the range were made, most probably due to the fact that it was planned to be dropped out of a plane, rather than to be fired off a ramp on the ground. It was considered that a Heinkel HG-111 bomber would carry one or two of the modified V-1s close to a target area under its wings. Following launch, the pilot would aim it towards the target, open the canopy above him, and try to bail out of the aircraft before it was too late. This would obviously be difficult, as the rocket would be hurtling towards the ground at a great speed, and if the pilot was lucky, they could parachute towards the ground. Obviously this wouldn't have been easy to do, especially with a pulse jet engine air intake above your head. Chances are pilots wouldn't have made it past the engine, and it was estimated that only 1% of pilots in the Reichenberg had a chance of surviving. Around 175 of the modified V1s were manufactured, and there were also some unpowered glider variants, and even two-seater variants considered. The R1 was a basic unpowered glider, the R2 was an unpowered glider, the R3 was a two-seat jet-powered aircraft, and the R4 being the standard version. During testing, even famous pilot Hannah Reich crashed the weapon several times, and a number of pilots even died during test flights, just trying to land the aircraft. Reich said that the Reichenberg had a very high stall speed, and the accidents were caused by pilots trying to land at too low a speed, so pilots needed to increase their landing speed. Pilots had been trained on these virtual kamikaze missions, and the modified V-1 was ready for its missions. However, the program was eventually cancelled, as it was deemed that these missions resulting in the obvious death of a pilot were not in keeping with the German warrior traditions, and Albert Speer agreed that this was not the right way for the German military to go. Speer met with Hitler on the 15th of March 1945, and he convinced the Fuhrer to abandon the plan to use the modified V-1s as kamikaze attack aircraft. So the modifications to the V-1 to make the Reichenberg would have made an already terrifying wonder weapon deployed by the Germans even more horrifying. The Fieselar FI-103R, as it was known, was a desperate roll of the dice for the Germans at a time in which the Allies were on the advance, and the Germans were conceding territory all across Europe. The changes on board were aimed at providing one pilot the chance for his martyrdom for the Reich, and it was almost certain that a pilot from the Leonidas squadron would not have got out of the flying bomb alive. It would have been as destructive as the V-1 was, and even more tragic, with a pilot sat at the controls, aiming the aircraft and guiding it to inflict as much destruction as possible. Once again, thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.